Materials are what give a static mesh its visual appearance. Using the starter content, let's explore how to create and assign materials with different properties. Now we can see that this static mesh also only has one material assigned to it. If we double click on it, we'll open up the material editor. Here we can see all of the nodes that make up the material and you can simply hold right click to drag around inside the material graph. Materials can seem very daunting at first, so let's create a few of our own materials. So first let's go back to the content folder and I'm gonna make a new folder named materials. Let's double click and then here we're gonna make a few common and basic materials. Making a material is as simple as right clicking in the content browser and then creating a material. So first we're going to make a, mat a metal material. So I'm going to name this M underscore metal. Now the M in front is a naming convention that I like to use. We always recommend keeping your project organized by using a consistent naming convention for all, your, all of your assets. You can find a recommended asset naming guide in the description. So now let's double click and open up this material will be met with an empty material graph. First things first, we're gonna add a base color. So you, to add any node inside the material graph, simply right click and then you can search or browse through all the different nodes that you can use. So to add a base color, we're gonna right click and then search up constant three vector. An alternate way to get this node is to hold the three key on your keyboard and press left click. So here we can double click and then I'll just add a nice little silvery color. Now we can connect this node to the result node. I'm just gonna make this a bit darker. And you can see that it will change live in this little preview. But our material is not metallic yet, so let's add a metallic component to it. So, like the color, let's right click and search up constant. Alternately, you can hold the one key and then click. Let's set this to one and then attach it to metallic. Now we can see that it is shiny in the viewport. And if you click save, we can now drag it on to the plane that we added earlier. And we can see that we have a metallic material now. However, if you'd like to make easier changes to this, let's convert these two nodes to parameters. This will make it easier and it, it'll expose these parameters to the details panel. So simply right click and then click convert to parameter. Let's name this metallic. And then we'll do the same with the color. I'll call this base color. Now if we go to the parameters tab, we can easily change all the parameters that we exposed in the material. This looks pretty good, but what if we want to add a texture to it? First, I'm going to go to the content folder and then I'm going to make a new folder named textures. Now I will open this textures folder. And I'm just going to simply drag in from Windows Explorer into the content browser some textures. And here you'll see that it'll automatically import. Now that we have some textures added, let's go back to our material. So to add a texture, you can simply just drag and drop into the material graph. So let's add in our material texture. And here in the material graph, we'll find a texture sample node. So now what we can do is first break this link by holding Alt and left clicking. And then I'm gonna add a multiply node. So to do this, just simply search up multiply. Next, I will add both of these nodes and then connect to base color. So now you can see that we have a texture sample. One final thing, let's add some roughness to it. 
Another way to add a parameter is by right clicking and then you can promote to parameter. And here we can have a roughness. I'm going to set this default value to 0.5. Now we can click save. And here we can see metal texture on our plane. However, let's say that this tiling looks a bit stretched out. Let's go back to the material. And then let's add a text coordinate node. And then we can click this to expand it down. Let's connect this to UV. And then I'll set the tiling to 2. And save it. Now our material is looking a bit better. Now we can make a few more common materials. So next, we'll make a new material, and we'll call this one Emissive Color. Open it up, and this one will be pretty easy. So let's make another color node by holding 3 on our keyboard, and I'm going to convert to parameter and call this Emissive Color. I'll make this a nice blue color. Then we can simply drag this to emissive color. And if we drag this on, we will see that it has some nice emission to it. However, if it's not bright enough, let's go back in. I will break this link, and then I will make a new parameter and call this emissive strength. And then I'm going to add a multiply node by holding M and clicking. So I'm going to set this to something crazy like 100 and then connect them together and then connect to emissive color. Now in the preview you can see it is super bright and if we click save we can see that it is super bright. And with Lumen, you can see that it is also dynamically lighting this chair. Next, let's add one more material. We're going to call this M underscore emissive image. Again, double click to open. And we're going to go through this one faster. So first, we're going to make the emissive color. Convert this to parameter. I'll just make this a pure white. And then next, I'm going to drag in my texture. And I'm going to add the texture coordinate node. And then it can connect this to the UVs. So first, we're going to multiply these together. And you can bring up a multiply node again by holding M and clicking. So I'll connect these two together. But let's say we also want to control the emissive strength. So I will add a constant, convert to parameter, name this emissive strength, and then add another multiply node, and then connect these two together. I will give this a default value of 50. And then finally, I can attach this to emissive color. And here we will have our emissive image material. Once it saves, I will drag this on. And you can see that we have an emissive image material on our plane. Another important asset type is material instances. Material instances are essentially copies of a material that allow you to make slight changes without affecting the original material. So this can be useful if you want to have different variations of a certain material. To create a material instance, simply right click on a material and click create material instance. I will name this MI and then I'll delete the instance it adds. When you open up the material instance, you'll find a window that is very different from the regular material editor. In the top of the details panel, we will see a few parameters that have been exposed from the parent material. And under, we can find the parent material that we are instancing from. 
So let's say we want to adjust the color of just this instance. So we must first check the override box, and then we can modify the color. So let's change this to a nice red color. So also, if I move this over and then attach this material instance to the material, we can make live edits and we can see it being reflected in the viewport. So we can find a color that we are most happy with. So I like this nice red, so I'm going to click OK. And here we can also change the emissive strength. So if I want this to be dimmer, I'll change this to 10 or even 5. Now if we add the original material, we can see that we are not changing anything about the original. We're just changing this instance of it. Now that we have created a few basic materials, please proceed to the next lesson where we'll look at how we can package elements into reusable objects called blueprints which can also contain custom actions and interactivity.